Hello, everybody. It's about 11 on Tuesday, Central Daylight Time, and I have finally put together a good explanation of the images assignment. As a matter of fact, I've made on the assignments page, so if you go to library science and uh, website assignments, the same link that you can find from Learn, you will see when you go to Intro to Web Design Assignments, I've made the inline images assignment its own page. Now I'm going to do that for all of the assignments, but this one had so much text I decided to make it a separate page. Okay, so you'll see here it is. So what you're going to end up doing is making a single HTML page with a stack of 10 images with links next to each. Okay, and I want to talk a little bit about how to do images and then how to do links and then about Flickr. So you'll see here I've got an example of an image link, or an image tag, excuse me, and then another one here for links, but I'm actually gonna show you what I've done to sort of simplify this process. I've made a page that has some code I want you to actually take, so I'm telling you to use this. So if we view the source here, if I can get that to work, it doesn't matter. I've got it here. You can look at the source code here and take this code, copy it, paste it into your text editor, and start with that. Notice that for the title tag right here, let's actually make this a little bit bigger so that everybody can see maybe better. So notice there's a title tag, you've gotta change that to something better than image page template. And notice there is uh, an H1, that probably you could leave alone, but then there are some other tags I want you to fiddle with. Okay, so what exactly are we looking at here? This is a web page that has been structured with some of the semantic stuff we talked about in chapters one, two, and three, and it has an image tag, which is from chapter five, and a link, which is actually from chapter six. So we're kind of covering a lot of ground in this one space. So first things first, notice on line nine, going down to line 20, there's a, a tag there called, called article. So the first few chapters talked a lot about semantics, which won't change the way the content looks on, in the browser, but it will set it up to be interpreted a little bit differently when we finally get around to cascading style sheets, okay? And it's a good habit to take everything that's one particular item and make it an article, which is why on line nine, I open tag article on line 20, it closes it. So imagine that, say, um, um, a news feed, we're looking at, at this particular website and I had a whole bunch of different articles on there. Well, everything in between this tag, article slash article, that's all kind of related. That's all the stuff related to my photos and the links for each individual photo and things like that, okay? So that's what an article is. And for right now, I'm not gonna really differentiate between article and the other different semantic tags. So there was one for navigation, there was one for sections, which it's really um, difficult to decide when to use article and when to use section, so article is kind of the default one to use. So you'll notice me using it a lot, okay? Then let's talk about the H's. Here's an H1. Let's go back to the browser real quick. An H1 shows up on bold, uh, size 14 I think, if I'm not mistaken and all on its own line, okay? And H2, like this guy here, is slightly smaller and still bold and is also on its own line. So if we switch back to the source code, H1 is meant to be used once inside, say, an article like I've got here. So every this basically says everything from this point on is related to Jimmy Nolan's astronomy photos. But each kind of subsection, like here's one about the image for transit of Venus. Here's another one for my next image. And then I'll have, so I should have a total of 10 of these blocks like this. So 10 H2s, 10 image tags, 10 little paragraphs with just uh, a link in each paragraph, okay? But one H1, because that's the, the definition of this particular section, okay? If this page had more than one article on it, then I would have one block here and then another one there and another one there. 
So in this case, we're just going to stick with one. It's probably best to do that anyway. So how does an image link work? Notice it's IMG, and then at the very, very end, there's a slash, because this one doesn't have an opening and a closing tag like the H does, or article does, or, or head, or body. Image just or I am uh, open tag IMG source equals whatever the actual website is for the file or if the file is living on your server you would just put image.jpg but for this example we're linking using an absolute URL so this is a the browser is going to actually stop what it's doing when it gets to this line go to this website and download the picture and then display it in line with the HTML that's what this is called an inline image Okay, the alt tag is there so that if the image doesn't load, the browser has something to show. And the alt tag is also a way, if you leave your mouse over the image for a moment, you get a little tool tip in some of the browsers. Looks like Chrome doesn't do it. <clears throat> and then lastly, I've put a width attribute. Now this is 150 pixels. It's not inches or millimeters or any other kind of uh, length measurement. It's pixels, which is a single pixel element on a monitor. Everybody's monitor is slightly different. My monitor here uh, is probably a lot higher resolution than, you know, my, for example, my laptop monitor. So even though you set it at 150 pixels, the, the person can set their monitor to whatever sort of resolution they want. But that doesn't matter. The width right here is a way of making sure that I'm looking at a small kind of thumbnail miniature version of the uh, whole image, okay? I'll show you what I mean in a minute. And then on the next line, I've made a paragraph. Notice there's an open tag P and a close tag P. That sets that entire, whatever's in between P and slash P is now going to be set off on its own. Kind of like H1 and H2, each was on their own line, set off on their own line. So is a paragraph. All the stuff in between P and slash P, in this case, all I have is this text here, transitive Venus page on Flickr. It's in its own paragraph. Okay, so let's talk about what that link, how that link works. You make a link using the tag A, and the uh, attribute, which is what this thing inside the actual tag is, this thing called href, the attribute stands for hypertext reference, okay? Just like the attribute src inside the image tag stands for source, I think I forgot to mention that before, and alt stands for alternate, and width stands for the width in pixels, okay? And every tag that has an attribute, like image has source, and A has href, you have to put an equal sign, and then inside the quotes you put whatever the value is for that particular attribute. So for example, the attribute for source is this big long URL right here. Just like the attribute for href is this big long URL right here. Notice the two URLs aren't exactly the same. This one is the image one, and notice it's kind of a complicated one that Flickr uses. It's a static link that they've set it up to, you know, so that it doesn't matter how many people link to it. Whereas the href attribute value, this big long thing, is an actual web page. And if I actually go to this page, which I'll do, it actually takes me to a Flickr page which has a whole lot more information. It's got my photo stream and it's got a menu to let me change all these different things. But if I look at, if I right click on the picture and say open in a new tab, that URL, the one that had the static Flickr nonsense, that's just the picture. This is not a web page, this is literally a link to the file, which I could then right click and save onto my computer or something like that. So what we're gonna, what I'm having you do is display the image in line, but then put a link to the actual Flickr page so that if you wanted to, you could click on the words and it will take you there. Oh, I didn't actually tell you how that works. So here's A, here's href. Here's the stuff that goes, oops, here's the, the text that goes in between A and slash A. That's what the user will see is highlighted in blue. And when they click on it, it takes them to whatever this website is, okay? So open tag A, slash tag A, href equals quotes the entire website they're supposed to go to including the http colon slash slash if you leave out http colon slash slash the browser thinks you're talking about a file on this computer or on the server it won't understand that it's supposed to leave where it is now go to some new website and do something different okay so you have to include the http also make sure that when you do attributes like here's an open quote and there's a close quote there if i could highlight it I promise I can. There we go. So every attribute has an, uh, a value that has to be set off inside its own set of double quotes, like this one is here. Like that. Boop. There. 
okay? It, uh, you could, if you wanted, add some other text, like transit of Venus page on Flickr, period. I really enjoyed this event. And so that, in this case, the stuff that's not inside A and slash A, that's going to actually show up as black text. The stuff that's in between A and slash A is going to show up as uh, an actual link. Okay, so I've set this up where you can actually take the source code that I've given you guys, right click, view page source, you can actually take this code, copy it and paste it and start with that. So notice what I've done is I've given you a, an H1 which you want to put something better than put introductory paragraph here, an H2 which you can change it around to meet your needs, but it's the, this one pretty much works as is. And then another H2, which is incomplete. And so you'll end up with a total of 10 of these blocks, like this, 10 of these blocks that have an H2, an image tag, a paragraph, and inside that paragraph is a link. Okay, and all of that is inside article slash article so that we're following proper semantic procedure. The article tag doesn't really change anything about the way the, the stuff looks inside the browser, but we're, we're trying to uh, structure our code so that it will work really well with CSS and with uh, be standards compliant and work with screen readers for those who are like visually impaired and that kind of thing. So that's why we do that. Okay, that should be enough to get started on this. This entire page is visible on the images assignment. So all of the links are there, all 10 of the images, their titles and the links. I put a link to the Flickr photo page so you can get each of the pages one at a time. I put a link to the template where you can steal my code and a little bit of explanation like I just went through with the image and the href. All right, let me know if you have questions.